demonstration is part of the Living Sustainably video series, which is a collaboration with Ecos Fox Valley, the Town of Menasha Sustainability Committee, and SCA Tissue. I'm Teresa Weglars, Assistant Professor of Biological Sciences at the University of Wisconsin Fox Valley. And we are on the UW Fox Valley campus. We've had a successful composting program in place for three years. We've composted more than two tons of kitchen scraps and organic materials from campus, local business partners, and community members. When we started composting at UW Fox Valley, I contacted Joe Van Ross. Joe is UW Extension Recycling Specialist and the current coordinator for the Wisconsin Master Composter Program. Joe, why compost? Well, when people decide to compost, it's usually for one of two reasons. Uh, the first one is, as you described, to take care of a waste material. You can compost kitchen scraps, um, leaves, or grass clippings right in your own backyard. The other reason people decide to compost is for this, this black gold, as people call it. Um, this compost can be applied to your garden beds, flower beds, even top dress your lawn with it. It's a valuable soil amendment. It provides nutrients and other things that lead to a healthy soil. If we have a healthy soil, we're going to have healthy plants that grow in that soil. And I know I apply compost to my garden every year, and I have great tomato plants. Now that you've decided to start composting in your backyard, um, I'm really hoping you're going to give it a try. You're probably wondering, what can I put in my compost pile? Um, it, right now, as we're filming this, it's fall, so there's lots of leaves, leaves falling from the trees. So most people will rake them up, they'll put them into these black plastic garbage bags, and then they hope the city comes along and picks them up. Well, with backyard composting, you can take care of that problem all by yourself. You can take your leaves. Uh, they're a great source of carbon. Um, when we teach backyard composting, we talk about the browns. And browns, such as leaves, are something that we can store. So you can put them in your plastic bags, but keep them by your compost pile because you're going to need them later. Because in the summer, we have lots of green grass that's growing. And grass clippings are a wonderful component for a compost pile. So you can add them, mix them with your leaves in order to start building that composting process. Also garden debris. Uh, many people are cleaning up their gardens this time of year and throughout the growing season there's many different types of scraps that are around in your garden that you can put into your compost pile. And speaking of scraps, um, we all eat our fruits and vegetables, but we still have apple cores, banana peels, some green beans that got a little too big, maybe some coffee grounds, some coffee filter. All those things can go right into your backyard compost pile and be safely composted. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort, but it takes just a little bit of planning for you to get started. So far we've learned what can go into our compost piles, but let's talk a little bit more about what composting is. Composting is a biological pro process. Bacteria, molds, fungi, uh, earthworms, sow bugs are all living within our compost piles. And it's our job to help create the right conditions for them so that they can make this wonderful compost product. The first thing I'd like to talk about is food. Our microorganisms need a balanced diet just like you and I do. In the world of composting, we talk about browns and greens as being part of a balanced diet. So we take things that are brown, such as these leaves, and we'll mix them in in a ratio. And many people will use a ratio of about three volumes of leaves And again, the leaves provide the browns to the composting process. The next thing we can add is one volume of greens. Greens are grass clippings. We all know um, they have lots of nitrogen in them, and it complements the browns from the leaves. And it provides that balanced diet for those bacteria and other organisms living in our compost pile. We can also add, as a brown this time of year, is garden so as we're cleaning up our gardens, we can break up the uh, bean vines. We mix that in with the leaves and the grass clippings, and it helps create the right food 
for our organisms. The next most important thing for our composters is water. Just like you or I need water in order to survive, without water our microorganisms don't make compost for us. So we have to make sure we add water to our compost pile as well. Um, this is probably the number one thing that people who compost in their backyards forget to do. Um, your compost pile should be really wet. Probably wetter than you think it should be. Um, as wet as a well wrung out sponge. So if you pick up your compost and you give it a squeeze and no water runs out, you open up your hand and it kind of all falls apart, you need a little bit more water in your compost pile. So add a little bit more. So if you're out in your yard watering plants, your compost bin probably needs some water too. So we can mix three volumes of brown, the leaves, with one volume of grass clippings or greens. So we started building this compost pile or compost heap using yard materials. We added some leaves, we added some grass clippings, and some garden debris. Um, earlier we talked about how you can put kitchen scraps in your compost pile. When we add our kitchen scraps to the pile, we want to make sure that we're burying them within the compost pile itself. So we want to dig a little bit of hole, add our kitchen scraps, and then make sure we're covering it up with some browns. Kitchen scraps count as a green within our compost pile. And we want to make sure that we're adding enough brown to them so that there's an adequate balanced diet for our micro microorganisms. So this is how we can build a compost heap or a compost pile in our backyard. Uh, this works for a lot of people. Uh, they put the pile at the corner of their garden. It's easy for them to add their leaves or their grass clippings and the garden debris, and they make wonderful compost. Uh, but some people prefer to have a compost bin. Um, there's a couple different ways that people can go about having a compost bin. You can build your own. Um, on the UW Extension website, we have a number of different plans that you can use to decide how to build your compost bin. Some are cost next to nothing, just a roll of wire or snow fence. Others are more elaborate. You can build out of cedar or other wood materials. Um, I've seen some compost bins that cost up to two or three hundred dollars in materials that people have spent time and effort to help make more compost. If you don't want to build your compost pile, maybe you want to think about purchasing one. Here's one example of a purchased compost bin. This is the Geo bin. Um, it costs about $35 and it will last a long, long time for you if you take care of it. Uh, there's other manufactured bins that are out there. Uh, some of the local communities will sponsor compost bin sales from time to time. So there's opportunities there to purchase a bin as well. If your community is not selling bins, uh, there's many online retailers and some of the home centers and garden centers are now carrying compost bins as well. So, we could use a compost heap or a compost pile to start composting, or if that doesn't work for you, you can start adding your materials to a manufactured bin or a bin that you've built on your own. Well, now that you've got your compost pile built, I'd like to talk a little bit about taking care of the compost pile that you've made. Um, those microorganisms need a little bit of assistance from time to time. They really like it if you mix their food up. So you can use a, a fork or a shovel and you can get into your compost and you just want to turn it over and mix it up. So we have all the different materials that mix together. Um, if you're making a hot compost pile, you're probably going to want to be out there maybe once a week turning your compost. If you're just kind of a cool and easy composter, Maybe once a month you're out there turning your compost pile. Um, so you want to take care of it. When you're turning it, that's a great time to add water as well. Uh, to this point, you know, I've, hopefully I've made it sound pretty easy to start composting. But there are some things that may turn up that uh, may surprise you a little bit. You may get an order of ammonia or a little bit of a rotten egg smell. That probably means you have too many greens in your compost pile. So you want to add some brown materials, something like dry leaves, and then give your compost pile a good turn and stir and mix it up. The other common question I get is, I put all those materials together, Joe, and it's just not doing anything. It's been four weeks, it looks the same as the day I put it in there. 
Um, usually in that case, there's probably one of two things you can do to kind of get things going within that compost pile. Usually your compost pile is going to be too dry in that case, so add some water. We talked a little bit about the idea of that well wrung out sponge, so make sure you have enough moisture in there for those microorganisms. If you have enough moisture and it's still not doing much, it probably means there's not enough greens in that compost pile. Greens bring nitrogen, and those microorganisms need nitrogen as well. So add some fresh uh, kitchen scraps, add some grass clippings to that compost. That's going to kickstart things and start getting things moving and help move you along to making that finished compost product. Something that looks like this. If you're making a hot compost pile, it may be as little as three or four months when you have something that looks like this finished compost. If you're just doing that cool and easy compost, you're probably going to have to dig out from the bottom of your compost bin maybe six to nine months after you started. The hot compost takes a little bit more effort, but you're rewarded by having finished compost much more quickly. We spent a little time today talking about how to get started with composting, what goes into our compost pile, and how we can take care of it so that we can produce this wonderful black gold called compost that we can use in our garden beds, in our flower beds, and use as top dress on our lawn. Uh, certainly we can't cover all the ins and outs of composting just in a short amount of time. But if you go to uh, your local library, they have plenty of resources available to you for composting. Your local county extension office is a wonderful resource to look towards as well. You can find out more about composting, what goes into it, how you can get started, and how you can take care of your compost to produce this wonderful black gold called compost. This video series is a collaboration of Ecos Fox Valley, Town of Menasha Sustainability Committee, and SCA Tissue. This presentation is part of a video series containing ideas on how to be more sustainable at home and around your neighborhood. Simply visit this website to watch, learn, and take steps to live more sustainably. www.ecos-foxvalley.com